Please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of contemplative silence for our great country, its citizens, and those serving it around the world. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Please call the roll. Majority Leader Borgia. Uh, here. Minority Leader Testa. Here. Mr. Boykin. Here. Mr. Burroughs. Here. Mr. Gelfarb. Here. Mr. Hardcom. Here. Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Mezano. Here. Ms. Marcotte. Here. Mr. Parker. Here. Ms. Perez. Here. Ms. Shimsky. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Ms. Freckman. Ms. Williams. <laughs> Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Chairman. Present. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Excellent. At this time, I call for a motion on the consent agenda. Madam Majority Leader. Okay. I would like to move the consent agenda with the following changes. On the first page, item 7508, sever and over. On page 4, item... Number 12, ID number uh, 7523, add the committees on environment and energy and the committee on infrastructure. Number, the next one, number 137525, add the committee on environment and energy. On the next page, page five, item number 7502, number four, add the following legislators, uh, L. Williams, Perez, Spreckman, Borgia, Shimsky, Parker, and Boykin. On the next item, number 57503, add Legislator Testa. On item number six, there's just a little error. The title says Baby Boomer Flight Program, but in reading the text, we believe it's actually Baby Boomer Flight Problem uh, within the text of the item. Uh, number seven, item number 7505, add Legislators Shimsky, Boykin, Harkham, Parker, L. Williams, and A. Williams, and also refer that committee to the Committee on Public Safety, that item 7505. On the next page, um, uh, number 11, ID, ID number 7521, add the Committee on Community Services. The following page, number 17, ID number 7529, remove the Committee on Community Service and replace it with the Committee on Infrastructure. And I believe that is all I have. Mr. Testa. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We would like to, um, on page 7, number 18, 7530, I'd like to sever that, please. It was a sever. It's ever and over. Otherwise? Yeah. Otherwise, we concur. Concur with the rest? Okay. And Mr. Marzano? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, then we will uh, uh, so move. To All right, let's go to uh, minutes approval. Yes, I'd like to move the minutes of the Monday, September 8th, 2014, 7 p.m. meeting. Second. Mr. Testa? Second. And Mr. Marzano? Yes. Okay. And without objection, uh, we will uh, so approve the minutes. At this point, um, Madam Clerk, uh, rules for public comment, please. The speaker shall be limited to three minutes. I'll call the names of the speakers and ask them to please come down the aisle to my left behind the black ropes. Dr. Frederick Guida, Rafael Guida. Regina Riley, Yvonne Rivera, Ed Riley, Joy DiCerio. First speaker is Dr. Frederick Guida. My name is Dr. Fred Guida. I live in Kachapqua, New York, and I'd like to uh, protest and criticize the uh, clinic ac access bill that's being uh, uh, deli uh, deliberated here. Uh, looking at the whole thing, it's not only a, uh, 
a, a, an infringement on my uh, freedom of uh, speech, et cetera, but it's also, uh, looking at it, I mean, I would have to be two, two blocks away from the clinic in order to protest, and, or even what these women need, what the place needs is a little education and, a li and somebody there to sympathize with these women that are going in there, being most of them being coerced. I mean, how much more money are we going to give uh, to the Planned Parenthood tax money? How much more uh, leeway are we going to give with non-standardized uh, 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 clinics, not, not reviewed? They, uh, they uh, run a whole pedophile uh, protection racket with uh, non-reporting of statutory rape, et cetera. I, I, this is, uh, the women need to know more about what's going on with the baby and with the uh, and what's going on in their body than they do know when they're pulled into those places. So this is uh, uh, important not only for our freedoms and uh, what this country stands for, but also that we get to the uh, woman and be able to somebody there to be able to support life. Uh, this is uh, going on for too long now, and. Uh, and we keep giving feeding Planned Parenthood and the whole abortion industry more and more of things that the, actually most of America doesn't believe in. You know, the, even the Roe v. v. Wade uh, is, is a judicial error. It's, it's uh, 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 liberty trumping life for convenience. And, or I don't know how they came to this, uh, if they're in denial about the whole situation, if they don't know, or maybe it's even uh, uh, bigotry, like the uh, uh, Justice Ginsburg said uh, a few years ago in the uh, New York Times that she thought, she said she thought that we originally passed Roe v. Wade in order to uh, eliminate uh, certain undesirable parts of the population. That was the main reason. It wasn't, she said, not to, for women's rights or to help the babies or to help anybody. It was just to eliminate, and who is she talking about? Who is she, who, who, who in this society should be eliminated? And who decides that, the judge? Anyway, we were in this, to, to, not for any good fight. We're just here to say that, you know, abortion is not medical care. They have a problem with doctors doing it now, so they want to have no doctors, but they have, they have all these freedoms, these clinics that go beyond any other office, medical office or hospital in the United States. And, they get, and they're just either not, not uh, uh, reviewed, they're not examined, they're not uh, uh, found out about until uh, Gosnell and things like this happen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This clinic aspects bill takes away a citizen's right to lawfully assemble and free speech under the First Amendment to the Constitution. Women should be given all the information and choices available to them so that they could make their own informed decision. Pan Parenthood claims that abortions are only 3% of its business. In reality, it's over 51%. Planned Parenthood's total annual revenue is over a billion dollars. Their net profit is 18.5 million. 51.5% of Planned Parenthood's revenue comes from abortions alone. Planned Parenthood cumulative abortion income since 1970 is over $2 billion. They take more than $1.4 million a day from taxpayers like me and retain an $18.5 million surplus at the end of the year. Planned Parenthood was, is, and will always be abortion-centered. 98.1% of pregnant women going to Planned Parenthood are sold abortions, while less than 1.9% of pregnant women receive non-abortion services. In sum, Planned Parenthood is about abortion for profit, not women's health. As Abby Johnson, former Planned Parenthood clinical director said, and I quote, as Planned Parenthood clinical manager, I was directed to double the number of abortions our clinic perform to drive up revenue. Planned Parenthood doesn't care about women's health care needs. It cares about abortion. How much blood will satisfy Planned Parenthood's needs? We're trying to save children. To Planned Parenthood, it's just another dollar. We're not hurting anyone. We're we, we're just praying for God's guidance and strength. 
Is Planned Parenthood afraid that a girl will walk out and not kill her child that day? We have freedoms to kill our children. Our children are not protected under the law. Now our freedom of speech is in peril. The First Amendment still protects us. You want to change that too? What are you afraid of, Planned Parenthood? The end of the killing? I'm Regina Riley from the 9th uh, Legislative District. The First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America guarantees uh, freedom of peaceful assembly, freedom of speech, and of religion. The Abortion Clinic Access Bill bans citizens from a public sidewalk and public parking area used by people for many reasons, including a few uh, people using the sidewalk and parking to go in to the abortion mill to kill their baby. Or suppose it were that the people were going in to euthanize their little puppy by uh, pulling his arms off or her arms off and uh, taking her head, opening it up and taking out the brains, sucking out the brains, or putting it through uh, a suction vacuum, which is what happens in an abortion. Suppose uh, they were going in to buy a puppy whose litter mates had been uh, killed because of unsanitary and uh, dirty conditions. Uh, I'm sure everybody in this legislature would be out there on the picket line telling people, this is a terrible place. You shouldn't be going in here. At least you'd be there uh, uh, peacefully assembling and trying to tell people, offering them literature so that they'd know. And you wouldn't want to have any 100-foot barrier. You wouldn't want to have 100 foot away from the, uh, from the parking lot because of this horrible puppy mill. So uh, all of a sudden, uh, because it's pro-lifers and it's Planned Parenthood and other abortion mills involved, things change. It's no longer do the people have going in uh, have a right to uh, euthanize their puppy by these horrible means or buy a puppy uh, from these mills. Now it's about a baby, and all of a sudden they don't. You know, I don't, we don't have a choice. Uh, so when it comes right to peaceful assembly, peaceful prayer, and offering alternatives abortions, uh, we'd be with arrested within 100 feet, according to this bill. We'd be arrested if we're 100 feet within the parking lot area that's used by everybody else, and we should be able to use too. Um, so you're not making any sense. You should dump this bill. McCallum versus Coakley in Boston, Massachusetts in June was, was voted by the S Supreme Court nine to zip to say, you don't have a right to have a bubble zone, boys and girls not for abortion mills, just like anything else. So dump the bill, please. Good evening. My name is Yvonne Rivera and I live in Croton on Hudson. Today we once again take up our battle over the clinic access bill. When any of us reaches a point in our lives when we are forced to make a grave and important determination, it is our practice to carefully weigh both sides of the issue. So also when a woman comes to the juncture of deciding between abortion or carrying her child to term, she has to debate this issue in her own mind. In reaching this big life decision, as in most cases, there is seldom 100% certainty. But this action, when carried to its completion, is serious and irrevocable for the woman, her child, and society. Even in the last phase of her journey to the clinic, she may have mental reservations. Therefore, I wish to defend her right to change her mind even at the last minute. Rather than be herded like a dumb animal into the abattoir, she must have the freedom of revisiting her decision. Even prisoners on death row have months to appeal their plight. That is why I oppose the draconian dimensions of the clinic access bill and ask today that it be disregarded. I would urge the legislators present to defend a woman's last chance 
to choose conscientiously between the precious life in, of her infant or its gruesome demise at the hands of abortion practitioners. Thank you. Ed Riley. My name is Ed Riley. I'm from Croton. Since we don't start with a prayer anymore, I'd like to suggest you read Isaiah 49. I can't read it here. I'd break down. Where not only once, but four times, God says, I formed you. Not Planned Parenthood formed. I, God, formed you in the womb. Isaiah 49. Look it up. Um, this is here we go again. <clears throat> this bill is clearly unconstitutional. And it must have been written by somebody who didn't go to law school or barely passed the bar exam. But in looking at the sponsors, it's the same suspects. Jenkins, Shemsky, A. Williams, L. Williams, Boykin, Parker, and their affiliation with Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. We've asked 45 times for these same people to investigate how Planned Parenthood has butchered women with using RU46 in Westchester County. You think they ever did that? No. Do you ever think they investigated how Planned Parenthood does, does not report suspected in, in instances of rape and incest to the authorities in this county? Did they ever? No. They come up with one stupid anti-First Amendment bill after another. But what surprises me always is the fact there are five black legislators in this county legislature and all five are pro-abortion. And if you look at the statistics provided by the New York State Board of Health Department on abortion, you will see that 10% of all abortions in the United States are done in New York State. <clears throat> and that of those, 40% are done on black women which means they kill probably about 45,000 black children, including twins and triplets. And there's not one black legislature in Westchester, Westchester that has the guts to say, stop this, and 25,000 are done on Spanish women. Why? Because Planned Parenthood puts their abortion mills in black and Hispanic areas. And that's where we pick it. So what do they want to do? Shut us up. You're not going to shut us up. Right now, in front of Planned Parenthood in Greenberg. For the next 40 days, we will peacefully pray outside that abortion mill, and 17% of those girls will not go in and affect Planned Parenthood's bottom line. These people never give up. The Supreme Court, 9 to 0. 9 to 0. All those liberals, Soder, Bader Ginsburg, all those liberals voted against this stupid bill, against the specific provisions of this proposed bill, and here they come back again. Why? They, it is a religion. Killing children is the heart of the devil's religion, human sacrifice. Planned Parenthood is part of that. Now, you'd think these black legislators would have learned from Margaret Sanger and the Negro Project. They never read it. I applaud those who went before me. You hear the statistics every time we come here, every single time. So what I have to say is very short. I come here tonight in disbelief that the topic of the clinic access is once again being raised. Each and every one of you intelligent men and women know that there is a constitutional right of peaceful protest. Is it your purpose to somehow frighten those who simply want to wish, who wish to counsel young women? Young women who do not know the choices 
that they have before them. Do, they do not know the choices before they commit to ending the life of their unborn child, a choice they would forever regret. What's the reason for using up your precious time, may I ask? Most of the people you represent are against abortion. The business of Planned Parenthood, though, and the money spurs you on, I guess. You know, when we come here many times, there are people who talk on different topics. There are other groups that come with their agenda. Maybe one of them, I've heard, to put a traffic light on a corner to stop needless deaths. Well, we want to save lives too. Little lives, human lives, lives in the womb. Thank you. I will close the uh, public comment portion of the meeting. Madam Clerk, let's proceed on to uh, standing committees. Understanding committees, item 7316 from the committees on budget and appropriations, economic development and capital projects and infrastructure, a bond act amendment authorizing the county to issue additional bonds in the amount of $1,650,000 to finance capital project. Over. Budget appropriations for capital project RG105 Glen Island Seawall Reconstruction in the amount of $7,900,000. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as a New Rochelle legislator and representing the Budget uh, and Appropriations Committee, we're happy to move this and I'll turn it over to Legislator Smith, whose uh, committee is not listed here, but it went through his committee as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Smith. Um, as discussed and approved in uh, economic development, we move this on to Labor Parks. Excellent. Mr. Harkum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Madam Chair, um, this is an emergency item uh, after Superstorm Sandy. The seawall that uh, basically protects and holds Glen Island together uh, was seriously compromised. Um, our Parks Department has been working carefully with FEMA on the approved way to do this and what the scope of work is so we will be fully reimbursed. It's $500,000 for design, $7.9 million uh, for construction. It's specialized design work, specialized materials, specialized contractors. Um, again, the, the work list has been approved by FEMA, and as the work is done, um, the county will be reimbursed. But uh, Labor and Parks um, uh, passed this unanimously, and, and we ask colleagues on both these items, this item and the next item, uh, uh, will uh, be passed. Thank you. Excellent. Colleagues on this item? Mr. Mazzano? Yes, I want to thank the committees for uh, moving this item through. If you uh, visit uh, Glen Island, which is one of the most beautiful and heavily used parks in Westchester County, I like to call it one of Westchester County's flagship parks to my district. Uh, if you visit it during the day, you'll clearly see the damage. You'll clearly see why this work is needed. It's very obvious. Um, it's a beautiful park, and I'm very thankful this money is now being passed and this work will be done uh, because uh, one of my number one commitments the day I got here is to make sure Glen Island remains a flagship park and this work needs to be done to keep it the beautiful park it is. Thank you. Excellent. Any colleagues on this? Uh, long roll call, please. Ms. Borges. Yes. Mr. Testa. Yes. Mr. Boykin. Yes. Mr. Burroughs. Yes. Mr. Gelford. Aye. Mr. Harkum. Yes. Yes. Mr. Mazzano. Yes. Ms. Marconi. Aye. Ms. Parker. Yes. Ms. Perez. <coughs> yes. Ms. Shimsky. Aye. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Breckman. Ms. Williams. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Through 17-0. Item 748 <coughs> from the Committees on Budget Appropriations, Labor, Parks, Planning, and Housing, and Economic Development and Capital Projects. A bond act authorizing the issuance of $500,000 
in bonds of the county to finance capital project RG105, Glen Island Seawall Reconstruction. Ms. Markup. So moved. Mr. Smith. As discussed and approved in economic development, we move on to labor and parks. Excellent. Mr. Harkin. As discussed, so moved. Okay, colleagues on this item. Otherwise, uh, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Approved 17 0. Item 7323 from the committee. Over. <clears throat> Item 732. Over. Over. Item 7401 from the Committees on Budget Appropriations and Labor Parks Planning and Housing, an act approving certain financial terms and conditions of employment requiring legislative approval by law and a collective bargaining agreement for those county CSEA employees for the two year period commencing January 1, 2010 and ending December 31. Just before I call on the um, two respective uh, committee chairs, I want to note that uh, Dr. Flynn is with us uh, this evening, the acting president of uh, Westchester Community College, and uh, we've been joined by the Westchester Community College CSEA president, Carol Ann Zavarella, uh, and uh, additional uh, fine people from the college, and thank you all for being at our committee meetings last uh, week, and you can take this back as an exercise in democracy for, uh, for your um, political science and government classes. Uh, at this point, I would uh, call on Ms. Marcotte to uh, lead us in the discussion on this item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the Budget and Appropriations Committee, we're happy to move this. This was discussed at length in the Budget Committee. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Legislator Harcum for Parks and Labor to discuss it. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, both the uh, Community College and CSEA um, unit, which is separate from the county CSEA, and that's important to note. Um, this is a bargaining unit of about 300 members have been working diligently and in good faith to get caught up on contracts. This is a retroactive contract, um, as uh, Madam Clerk mentioned, from January 1, 2010 to December 31, 2011. It represents 2% raise each year. The community college has budgeted that in. Um, the community college administration uh, has said it's a good deal for them. Uh, CSEA has ratified it, as you noted, Mr. Chair, both testified uh, at our joint committee meetings. Um, so I urge its passage. Thank you. Excellent. Colleagues on this item? Seeing none, <clears throat> let's take the uh, previous long roll call without objection. So ordered. on budget appropriations and public safety, an act to authorize the county to enter into a four-year intermunicipal agreement with the cities of Yonkers, Mount Vernon, and New Rochelle for the administration of the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant for 2012. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move this for the Budget Committee and turn it over to Legislator Gelfarb. Mr. Gelfarb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The county has uh, in, had a successful relationship with uh, Mount Vernon, New Rochelle, and Yonkers previously with respect to the Edward uh, Byrne uh, Justice Grant. In particular, we have uh, assigned Yonkers to act as lead agency on this uh, project. The amount of money is not particularly uh, significant for the county, yet this is an excellent program. It recognizes the tremendous sacrifice that uh, patrol, uh, patrolman uh, police officer Byrne uh, uh, committed years and years ago, he gave his life for uh, for the safety of the city, uh, citizens of the city of New York, and for the New York State as well. Uh, in view of the fact that Yonkers has done an excellent job administering this program on behalf of the various municipalities as well as the county, we strongly urge its passage. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item. Alrighty, seeing none, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Six from the Committees on Budget Appropriations and Public Safety, an act to authorize the county to enter into a four-year intermunicipal agreement with the cities of Yonkers, Mount Vernon, and New Rochelle for the administration of the Edward Byrne 
Memorial Justice Assistance Grant for 2013. Ms. Markup. Thank you. I'll move it for budget as previously discussed. Turn it over to Legislator Gelfarb. Mr. Gelfarb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the same reasons, we urge passage once again. The difference between uh, item number 7445 and 7446 is really just a matter of timing with respect to the uh, periods covered by the various grants. Uh, just as the uh, 7445 was in the interest of the people of the County of Westchester, we submit that 7446 is as well. Thus, so moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item? Without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Approved 17 0. Item 7344 from the Committees on Law, Legislation, and Budget Appropriations. A resolution to set a public hearing on a local law amending section 167.21 of the Laws of Westchester County to clarify that the County Executive and the Board of Legislators, as equal branches of government, are specifically excluded from the provisions of this section. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, please set the public hearing for September 27th, 730. Right? October 6th. It's an excellent law. We will get to it in good order. But <laughs> Just trying to rush things along. <laughs> no, we, you, you woke us all up. Thank you so much. We have a, um, uh, a motion. And um, Ms. Perez, do you concur? I concur. Okay. I have October and um, Mr. Right Williams? Yes, I concur. Excellent. So it is then um, October, October 6, 6th, 2014, at 7.30 p.m. Correct. Is the motion from the three committees. Any comment, discussion, co colleagues on this? Otherwise, uh, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Approved 17 0. Item 7409 from the committees on budget appropriations and law. An act authorizing the county attorney to settle the lawsuit of Albert Morales versus Liberty Lines et al. in the amount of $225,000. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move it for the Budget and Appropriations Committee and turn it over to Legislator Williams. Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, legislation is a lawsuit, settlement of a lawsuit that was commenced um, against Liberty Lines. Um, for negligence in connection with a uh, motor vehicle accident of which the plaintiff, Mr. Morales, was struck and injured by uh, Liberty Lines bus. The county attorney recommends that the settlement in the amount of $225,000 be approved. The committees met today and have had um, discussions on the settlement and we are prepared to move it forward. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item. None. We will uh, actually take a long roll call. Ms. Boykin. Yes. Mr. Testa. Yes. Mr. Boykin. Yes. Mr. Burroughs. Yes. Mr. Gelfar. Aye. Mr. Harkum. Yes. Mr. Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Mezzano. Yes. Ms. Marcotte. Aye. Ms. Parker. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Ms. Chimsky. Aye. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Breckman. Yes. Ms. Williams. Mr. Williams. Yes. Aye. Approved 16 0. Item 7410 from the Committees on Budget Appropriations and Law, an act authorizing the county attorney to settle the lawsuit of Michael Holloman versus Westchester County GQ individually and in his capacity as an officer of the County Department of Correction in the amount of $99,000 inclusive of attorney's fees. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the Budget Committee. So moved. I'll turn it over to Legislator Williams. Mr. Williams, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Plaintiff Holloman uh, was an inmate in the Westchester County Jail, commenced an action uh, against the county in the United States District Court, Southern District of New York, uh, alleging an assault by a corrections officer. The matter has been negotiated in the settlement proposed. <clears throat> Uh, by the county attorney in the amount of $99,000. The committees have convened and discussed the matter in full and recommends its approval. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item? Alrighty, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. made on behalf of Westchester County to be reimbursed for overpayments in connection with Medicaid prescription drugs to residents of Westchester County. 
Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this was moved out of the Budget Committee uh, this afternoon after several uh, discussions on it, and I'll turn it over to Legislator Williams. And Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The pursuant to Act Number 652003, the Board of Legislators authorized the county attorney to commence uh, legal action proceedings against pharmaceutical companies, manufacturers, uh, retailers, etc., who might have overcharged the county for Medicaid prescription drugs. This settlement is a result of that. Uh, those litiga that litigation that was commenced against pharma Pharmacia, which is a um, pharmaceutical company. The settlement, the net settlement amount is $10,297 with attorney's fees, is net of attorney's fees of 25%, which is about $3,000. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item, those will take uh, the previous long roll call without objection. So ordered. Over. Item 7437 from the Committees on Budget and Appropriations and Labor Parks Planning and Housing, an act authorizing the county to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the Village of Sleepy Hollow, whereby the village shall operate and maintain Kingsland Point Park on behalf of the county. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to move it for the uh, Budget and Appropriations Committee. It was discussed earlier this afternoon, and I'll turn it over to Legislator Harcum. Mr. Harcum, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we had uh, extensive discussions with our Parks Department. Um, the Village of Sleepy Hollow has managed Kingsland Point. Thank you very much. Has managed uh, Kingsland Point Park um, for a number of years. There have been two prior five-year IMAs. Um, and quite frankly, um, in good faith, both parties um, have sort of taken uh, uh, some, some good faith time to reevaluate the negotiation. Um, so they were not inclined to get into another five-year agreement. This will be a one-year agreement. So both parties, again, in good faith, um, can determine uh, the relationship moving forward. Um, so this is a one-year IMA. Um, that will be renegotiated by the Parks Department and the Village of Sleepy Hollow. It makes sense, and, and the players are being responsible here. They, they realize that, that um, there, there might be a different path in the future. There might not be a, path, a different path in the future, but uh, to both sides' credit, uh, this was negotiated in good faith. Um, so this is one-year IMA and uh, uh, Committee on Housing Parks, Labor, and whatever else we are, um, <laughs> has approved this, and I urge passage of, uh, of this as well. Thank love, love the ownership. Thank you, Mr. Harcum. Um, colleagues on this item, uh, seeing none, actually, we'll take a long roll call. Uh, let's say you just joined us. Yes. Mr. Testa. Yes. Mr. Boykin. Yes. Mr. Burroughs. Yes. Mr. Gelfarb. Aye. Mr. Harcum. Yes. Mr. Jenkins. Yes. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Ms. Shimsky. Aye. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Griffin. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Approved 17 0. Item 7442 <coughs> from the Committees on Budget Appropriations, Economic Development, and Capital Projects and Infrastructure. An act amending the 2014 County Capital Budget Appropriation for Capital Project SY024 Yonkers Joint. Yes, Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So moved for the Budget and Appropriations Committee. I'll turn it over to Legislator Smith for Economic Development. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. In July of this year, there was a catastrophic failure of a blower at this facility. Uh, it needs to be replaced. Uh, the project will entail replacing the blower and providing a, a backup. Also, too, engineering will be provided to prevent similar situations from occurring in the future. With that, we move it on to infrastructure. Ms. Shimsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is one of um, three electrically driven process air blowers that, that provide this particular function at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, we, need, uh, we need all three of them up, even though two of them operate at any given time, because these are, this is required by uh, 
federal and state standards um, in order to avoid problems with our compliance for our wastewater treatment. We need, we need all three blowers up and running. Um, as Legislator Smith cited, there was a catastrophic failure in July. Um, this million dollars will go toward sending the blower back to the manufacturer for the proper extensive repairs and the addition of a check valve to avoid such problems in the future. Thank you. Excellent. Colleagues on this item? Seeing none, we'll uh, take the previous long roll call without objection. So ordered. Approve 17 0. Item 7443 from the Committees on Budget Appropriations, Economic Development and Capital Projects, and Infrastructure. A bond act authorizing the issuance of $1 million in bonds of the county to finance capital project SY024, Yonkers Joint Wastewater Treatment Plant Secondary System Rehab. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to move it for budget and I'll turn it over to Economic Development. Smith. As previously discussed in our committee, we moved to infrastructure. Ms. Shimsky. As previously discussed, so moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. So moved for budget. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this involves the Yonkers Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, Post-storm standee, there was a significant damage. Uh, this is laying out 20, approximately $22.1 million of uh, total appropriations, which are going to fund repairs. Uh, there are, uh, since the storm, there has been patchwork done and uh, funding through regular capital, uh, re regular uh, county expenditures. Uh, there's issues with uh, which we understand to be very painstaking, which you know, entails cleaning conduit, replacing wires, and, and electrical parts that are out there. Um, right now, from a design perspective, is currently at 90%, uh, and it is expected that 90% of the funds relating to this project will uh, be reimbursed to the county through FEMA. With that, we move this project and further discussion on to infrastructure. Ms. Shimsky. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The flooding at the wastewater treatment plant facility, which as all facilities are right near the water, was quite extensive during Superstorm Sandy. The damage was quite extensive. We had a lot of conduits and a great deal of equipment in the basement, which, which got flooded out, um, and there's tens of millions of dollars of damage. Um, this capital budget amendment reflects now the judgment of, I believe, two different design consultants uh, who were hired to make sense of everything that needs to be done and put a plan together for remediation. Um, one of the issues we have to um, consider very carefully as we move forward is how to avoid such problems in the future with this and other types of facilities that must be kept near the water. Um, there has already been some discussion about this among the consultants. Um, FEMA, however, will only fund 90% of the um, replacement. Any upgrades um, would have to be funded through different sources, but obviously that is going to have to be done sooner rather than later because as we get more storms and more severe storms as a result of climate change, this will be a more regular occurrence and we can't keep continuing to, f to fix this amount of facilities every time God sneezes. Um, so toward that end, the Department of Environmental Facilities has commissioned a um, storm resilience study that should be coming in within the next couple months to give us some idea on what we should do to make improvements to hopefully minimize this kind of damage in future storms. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues on this item, for us, very important one. All righty. And uh, thank you to the chairs for their um, extensive, leading the extensive discussion uh, on this and so many other items. Uh, without objection, then, we will take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Approved 17-0. Item 7483 
from the committees on budget appropriations and labor parks planning and housing an act authorizing the county to purchase approximately 0.2 acres of real property located at 184 Farragut Avenue in the village of Hastings on Hudson and convey said property as well as authorizing the county to accept a grant of any property rights necessary in furtherance hereof for the purpose of developing two affordable AFFH units that will remain affordable for a period of not less than 50 years. Ms. Orcutt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll move it for budget and turn it over to Legislator Harkham. Mr. Harkham. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if, with your indulgence, I'll take the next two items together. Um, this is for both land acquisition um, and financing for uh, the creation of two affordable units uh, for home ownership in the village of Hastings. Um, <coughs> the cost per unit uh, to the county would be roughly $63,000, uh, which is less than our threshold for rental, uh, let alone uh, our higher threshold for home ownership. So this is a good deal for the taxpayers. It's two more units uh, toward the housing settlement, and it's providing two home ownership uh, opportunities in Hastings, uh, where we heard testimony today that uh, affordable housing is, is certainly needed, as in many of our communities. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues, Ms. Shimsky. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this represents yet another chapter in the uh, book written by the Village of Hastings on Hudson on affordable housing. Uh, long before the housing settlement in 2009, the Village of Hastings um, displayed a commitment to affordable housing and spent many years in the works trying to get as many projects as possible in place. Um, in the Housing Monitor's report of several months ago, he noted um, he singled out Hastings for praise in, in this regard, and um, I'm proud of my village, and I look forward to having these units up and running. There will be appropriate um, drainage um, mitigation on it, which will, help, which will help protect the neighbors, and um, I think this will be a worthy addition to our village. Thank you very much. Excellent. Other colleagues on this very important item before us? Seeing none, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Through 17 Item 7484 from the Committee's on Budget Appropriations and Labor Parks Planning Council. A bond act authorizing the issuance of $125,000 in bonds. Finance Capital Project BPL 50, Fair Affordable Housing Acquisition Financing 184 of Target Act. May it up. Thank you. So moved for budget, and I'll turn it over to Legislator Hockham. Mr. Hockham. <clears throat> so moved, as previously discussed. Excellent. Colleagues on this portion of it, otherwise uh, seeing uh, no objection without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Through 17 0, <clears throat> item 7485. Over. Uh, Mr. Jenkins. Item 7487. Over. Over. Item 7487. Over. Item 7488. Over. The Jets Protection Act of 2014. <laughs> <laughs> Item 7493. From the Committees on Legislation and Budget Appropriations, a resolution to set a public hearing on a local law amending Chapter 167 of the Laws of Westchester County by adding a new Section 167.201, requiring the Budget Director to issue periodic reports to the County Executive and the Board of Legislators concerning the County's actual and projected fiscal condition in relation to the annual budget adopted for that fiscal year and to publish those reports on the County's website. Ms. Price. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to set this public hearing for October 6, 7.30 p.m. Okay. And Ms. Marka? I concur. Excellent. Colleagues on this item, the setting of the public hearing. Without objection, we will take the previous long roll call. So ordered. Group 17 0. Act 75. I'm sorry. Item 7536 from the Committee on Parks, Labor. 
Committee on Labor, Parks, Planning, and Housing, an act to name the county park located at Library Green in New Rochelle as the Ruby B Park at Library Green. Mr. Arkham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, recently, we were all saddened by the passing of a great Westchester resident, Ruby D. Um, her accomplishments in the entertainment world um, speak for themselves, but I, I think more importantly, her accomplishments um, as an advocate for human rights, for civil rights, for dignity and opportunity for all. Um, she was a beacon for all of us. Uh, and while we are saddened by her passing, her memory and her legacy uh, and her message can live on. Um, and we think it would be only fitting uh, to rename the Library Green Park in New Rochelle, the Ruby D Park at Library Green in New Rochelle. Um, I, I know some of the New Rochelle residents um, feel very strongly about this. I know uh, the, the, uh, the city council has spoken on this, and, and I would surmise that all of us uh, would be in unison um, and moved by this as well. So moved. Excellent. Mr. Marzano. Yes, thank you. I'd just like to thank the board's leadership and the, the committee chairman uh, for moving this so quickly through. I understand this came at the last minute. The reason we're moving so quickly is there is an event coming up uh, uh, regarding Ozzie Davis and Ruby D. Uh, including a history of their films being shown at the library in New Rochelle, and they wanted to mention that the county approved the renaming of the park at that ceremony coming up next week. So that's why we tried to move so quickly. This was our last meeting before the event they're having in New Rochelle. So I thank everyone involved in moving this through. Some background information if you don't know. The Library Green Park in New Rochelle was approved by this legislature in 1998. It was one of the very first votes I took as a county legislator to build the park. The county still owns the land. Uh, the city runs the park. That's the intermissible, intermissible agreement we worked out with the city. Still the same to this day. That's why you're involved in this tonight. Um, the request to name the park Ruby D Park came from the family. Uh, the family wanted, uh, has re wanted to keep them separate because they both had something they were honored. So the movie the the theater aspect of the New Rochelle Library is now the Ozzie Davis Theater, and the park next door is Ruby D's. So they're still together which is kind of cool, right next door to each other. I, I would just say this, Peter laid out her history of activism. Um, what I loved about Ozzy and Ruby, as a, the New Rochelle County Legislator for two de decades, is they came to a lot of events in New Rochelle and they were just like everyone else. They were celebrities, they were superstars in the eyes of the world, yet when they walked into a, an event in New Rochelle, they were just like everybody else, saying hello to everybody, talking to everybody. As a matter of fact, they came to so many events, you really felt like they weren't celebrities anymore. They were just members of the community. And they were so nice. And they would talk to anybody. And they would sign anybody's autograph. They're just two warm, loving people. And they loved New Rochelle. And they loved that they lived in New Rochelle. And they were very proud that they lived in New Rochelle. So this honor that you are extending to Ruby D and her family tonight is massively well-deserved. Uh, uh, this great celebrity was a New Rochellean. And now there'll be a park in New Rochelle to forever remember her, and I can't think of a more fitting tribute to this really lovely lady who I've got to meet many, many times and I've talked with many, many times, and I always consider it an honor uh, to be in her presence and to, that this major star, this major movie star, lived in my city of New Rochelle. I'm still proud of this this very day, and now we're going to have this park. So thank you all. Thank you to my fellow New Rochelle legislators, Sheila and Catherine. Sheila, uh, <laughs> Sheila Marcotte. Catherine Parker, uh, for supporting me. Uh, my mind wasn't working for a second. Uh, thank you to this board, and I know the family's going to be thrilled. Thank you. Mr. Mazzano, thank you. Uh, colleagues at this point, uh, 203 New Rochelle legislators, congratulations. And uh, as um, the fourth New Rochelle legislator from many years ago, uh, I, too, uh, uh, join in, as all colleagues do, for sure. So any uh, comments, colleagues, uh, constituents? Uh, colleagues on this particular item. Otherwise, uh, seeing none, without objection, we will take the previous long, happily take the previous long roll call, so ordered. Approved 17-0. Motions, resolutions, call of the districts. Mr. Arkham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to mention that uh, Bernard Yablon is the father of Bruce Yablon, uh, who many of you know um, has appeared at all of our budget hearings 
uh, for the seven years that I've been on the board. He's very active in the town of Bedford on a number of boards, the Ambulance Corps, um, and uh, is, a, is a Democratic district leader there. But I think most importantly to this um, board, he is the one who brought to the attention uh, the, the uh, overhead strikes of the bridges, worked very closely with uh, uh, Legislator Borgia's Government Operations Committee and now Legislator Shimsky's committee. He's worked with the county police uh, very closely on that issue. Um, so would ask colleagues to join me on this memorial resolution. Sure. I'm sure colleagues yes. will. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Colleagues, Ms. Shimsky. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would like to add three names. Alfonso John Cerrone. Alfonso with an S. Cerrone. C-E-R-O-N-E. Dr. Sushila Gidwani Bushi, S-U-S-H-I-L-A, G-I-D-W-A-N-I hyphen B-U-S-H-I, and Matthew J. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh spelled K-A-V-A-N-A-H. Mr. Kavanaugh was a 58-year member of the Hastings on Hudson Volunteer Fire Department. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to join Legislator Perez with um, with Odessa Brown and Boyce Scoop um, Coleman. Um, Scoop Coleman, you may know, was the person that jumped into the Hudson River to try to save the young child. I would expect that maybe all of the legislators might want to. All colleagues um, will, of course, yeah, sure. to, to do that. Um, wow. and, and if Mr. Mezano would permit it, to join him with um, James Walsh. No, I went to school with this. Um, I also stand, Mr. Chairman, um, just to to uh, to point out for our, our record tonight. Um, during our meeting this afternoon, um, we had some conversation with the Department of Planning regarding the housing um, items, and just was concerned with any with everyone else um, that there were gaps in the uh, Deputy Commissioner's recollection on how certain things transpire and go through, um, go forth. And I just want to point out on the website, westchesterhousingmonitor.org, which is the monitor's website, there is a report, which is the monitor's second biennial assessment, which was filed on June 14th um, regarding a specific project. Um, and we were talking about the process where local municipalities um, have reached out to the monitor for different things. And the only point I want to note on the record tonight is that there is, in the monitor's report, a February 7th, 2000 letter from Edward Burroughs to Brian Lawler indicating the county support for the project. That's what it says here. And in a letter informed New York State of the county's intention to provide $100,000 per unit. So that was in 2011. Um, I can understand why the deputy commissioner might have um, forgotten that information, but just for members, and it was a very lengthy meeting this morning, um, and all of us deserve a, additional um, candy that goes around for everyone to keep us all awake. Um, but at the end of the day, I just wanted to put that on the record so all of our colleagues understand clearly that the monitor um, has um, in the past and will continue in his report, um, it's on the public website, um, and it was, um, at least disingenuous from our commissioner, deputy commissioner's point on the Department of Planning to suggest that she was unaware of this specifically when there's a letter from the commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, colleagues, motions. Call the districts, Mr. Maizano. I, I've, I'm not sure if these names are on my list for more resolutions. So let me just add them to make it official. Loretta Simpano, Dolores Greco, and Louis Galello. Thank you. All right. Colleagues uh, also just want to... Uh, um, note and uh, wish a very happy and a healthy new year to those celebrants uh, and, and colleagues, uh, Ms. Spreckman and uh, Mr. Galfarb, um, for uh, uh, our new year, and Mr. Goldstein and so many others in, in Westchester. It may be a sweet and happy time for everybody. With that said, uh, let's please stand to uh, a moment of silence for those we have unfortunately noted their passing. Motion to adjourn, Ms. Borgia. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we adjourn this meeting and reconvene at our regularly scheduled meeting on October 6, 2014 at 7 p.m. Aye. We are adjourned. Good evening, everybody.